Hey guys, so I'm always really interested in what I can do to be a more productive, helpful political activist because I like to see a better world. I'm a uh, romantic. Anyway, so I was looking at this organization called Clean Water Action New Jersey and I was really quite curious about this um, organization. And I did apply for the position of a environmental campaign organizer. I wasn't quite sure what that would consist of for them, what exactly they were meaning by that. Turns out it wasn't exactly what I had in initially thought it resembled something I recall doing when I was um, like 18 and I was canvassing for the Sierra Club, knocking on doors. Hey, can you sign this um, sheet of paper and pledge money for the Sierra Club? And I did it again when I was in South Beach for a while, knocking on doors. That time it was for gay rights. Anyway, I was curious about exactly what was it? the volume here is really loud. I apologize. I don't know. Is it loud for you? Or is it just loud for me? Hmm. It just sounds really way too loud. It's really annoying. Maybe it's the coffee that I'm just feeling too way too hypersensitive. I don't know. Um, anyway. You know me, I also have experience running for political office. I really didn't even bring that up though. In the interview, I didn't I didn't want to sound like pretentious or anything. And uh, you know, I have all this experience doing these things. And so we have the interview. And one of the topics uh, that I, I expressed right away, I said that I had a few questions because uh, I did my research on indeed.com. I was curious what people said. People had complaints and I was curious about them. People complained that uh, Clean Water Action New Jersey, all they really care about is the bottom line, you know, money and how many people they can get to donate, reaching quotas. And the individual, I'm sorry about that, spoke to said that it was reasonable to expect that people meet a certain standard and that's why they have the quotas and that this person, the person I spoke to can do it and so other people can do it. And it, it was cut and dry like that. Right away I was honestly turned off by that and would not agree. I do think that uh, it is true that some people are very results driven sales personality type people. And there are people who perhaps would go all the way to do what they can to get money. Um, but I think it's actually unreasonable to do something like a quota. If you want really good political activism, in my opinion, it's um, misses the point because it's not about the money it's about awareness at the end of the day, isn't it? Really just about awareness? I mean, don't get me wrong, I get it. Results m matter. I'm doing a podcast. I know that I want to increase my viewership and I know that uh, conversions people who are prospective audience to official paying audience, that's like an objective to have. I get it. But I'm uncomfortable with the thought of being in charge of someone and saying, oh, if you don't reach this quota, that's just too bad. I don't agree with that. In a million years, I don't agree with that. I agree with per I, what I care about. If I'm ever going to you know, be in charge of somebody, it, I'm going to care about that person's values first and foremost, and that person's intellectual, committed to intellectual and um, ethical um, integrity. So I was, I was 
finding myself in a state of disagreement about that. Um, then I asked about the scripts. Uh, they have what they call raps. You know, you knock on the door and you say like a certain spiel. And it said that people had on Indeed had complained about this and that they felt that they, you know, were not enjoying very much autonomy in their exchanges with people and they knocked on doors and things. And the response I got was, I'm not sure where you're getting that from. That's fine. That that may be true. I'm, I'm not here to claim to know what I couldn't possibly know. Uh, but I wanted to get get an opinion on that. Then the third question I asked, you know, I was really blunt. I asked about the plastic bag ban that Clean Water Action New Jersey proposes. And I was upfront about the fact that I don't agree with it. And I was a little concerned about um, pressuring people to advocate for so strong forceful and I think a little bit radical policy. I said, you know, not not that I don't see as a long-term goal doing away with plas the plastic bag experience, but banning it, I just, mm, banning plastic grocery bags. I can get it. Plastic is something we want to move away from. I just wonder if that's the appropriate thing to do. I wonder if that's the appropriate sort of de facto penalty to impose. Um, I have Oscar Trigueros here. Oscar, I want your opinion if you're willing to give it. Talking about the plastic bag ban. I mean, it's my opinion that that's sort of a radical short-term policy. I wonder if you would be for that or you see that as like a, a short-term thing that should happen now or if you think that's a longer term Thing, or if you think that whole concept is not objective at all, not a good idea at all, if you have a thought on that, I'd love to chat with you on that. Uh, I'm curious what other people think about the idea of a uh, plastic, plastic bag ban. But as I understand it at this time, it seems unreasonable. Like, a, um, I mean, there are a lot of priorities to have, like healthcare policy, like removing Trump, like concerns about immigration, um, fossil fuels, addressing fossil fuels and things like that. I don't know. You want to increase minimum wage? I, to me, the plastic bag ban is like, a, and it's an additional tax on everybody, actually including uh, members of, you, you know, the plastic producers. And so anyway, so I articulated this point of view to the individual who I was interviewing or who was interviewing me, or I guess you could say it was sort of like a group interview in a way. And uh, it was just a weird experience. Then, oh, what the hell? Oh my God, I apologize. Uh, I apologize. That's my wonderful wife texting me. Sorry, I have to be. Uh, wife comes first, though. One second. Apologize. Um, yeah, so then, I don't know, the individual I felt got kind of defensive and mouthy with me when I was asked, you know, like, what am I looking for? And is this something that I thought I could see myself doing? And I was really blunt about it and said, you know, I don't really know. I'm not sure if I, this is really a place where I could fit in. I don't see myself agreeing with this policy and don't know if I should uh, be in a place where, you know, I don't, I'm not sure 
why that would be necessary. And then, you know, she, well, okay, so now it's out there that it is she who I spoke with said that um, that it would not be harmful to the economy, that California did it, the, the plastic bag ban I'm talking about, and New York did it, and that Europe does it, and that it's not harmful to the economy. And um, if you're going to talk about whether or not something is good or bad for the economy, you might want to attach that to some sort of reference to something empirical. Like, how did you get to that deduction that you see a relationship between where the economy moves and the impact that um, the policy of banning plastic bags has or doesn't have? So right away, I just got this sense of like a sort of a anti-intellectualism. This is what I felt. Doesn't mean it's what it was. But it was how I felt. And then I was told, this is almost verbatim, but it's not exactly, but I was told something to the extent of, I'm not going to have a 30 minute conversation with you about policies we've thought deeply about. And I just thought, wow, wow. I mean, I think that's disrespectful to be quite honest. At the very, at the very, at the very least, I believe that if you want to have a discourse with somebody being very placid and objective, certainly passionate, but placid and objective is also very important. And what I got here was a sense of like a real sense of like disconnect, like um, not a lot of free thinking encouraged here. It just reminded me of, I, you know, I mean, I've done this thing before, the canvassing thing. I hadn't realized when I first applied for this that it was really canvassing was what they meant necessarily. And I had gotten into, I, I couldn't see eye to eye with the person I canvassed who was in charge of the canvassing then either. I mean, it just, so I guess the bottom line is my assessment of the um, Clean Water Action New Jersey organization is I get kind of a vibe that I can't relate to, a vibe that doesn't appear very interested in wrapping the mind around things. I'm not gonna have a 30 minute conversation with you about policies we've thought deeply about. I mean, that would be like me saying, um, that would be like me advocating for trying to convince you. That would be like me standing up for an opinion I have. And you, you asking me about it and me saying, well, I've already thought really deeply about this. I'm not going to waste my time talking to you about it. So, I mean, it's probably my fault too. I probably should have seen the red flag that is that there was a policy that I disagreed with. I probably should have seen that and said, okay, well, this is a, an activist organization that probably is all about only the policies they advocate. But just, I mean, that's, that's kind of annoying to me because it's weird because I do appreciate um, the fact that you have to be gung-ho about the policies you believe in. I'm gung-ho about the policies I believe in, but I, don't, I also don't pretend that I know everything. And everything has to be, to a degree, open to conversation, right? So I just felt that it was not really conducive to much conversation. And that that was the context in which this organization was going to be um, trying to move forward its intentions and its objectives. And yeah, I, you know, as I, you learn about yourself when you do these job interviews, you learn all about yourself and what jives with you and what doesn't jive with you. And I realized that what jives with me is like pro free thought. I really just can't, I, I need to be in a context where it's okay to think what I think. And, um, yeah, I just feel frustrated in that way. 
What's the great thing about working as a tutor, working at a university, is that it's all highly intellectual. I mean, there are politics to the university and things that I really don't relate with. But the premise behind it is intellectual. And that's nice. Very nice. Um, this is the reason I like independent media, like doing this podcasting thing and this is something like a Facebook live stream video blog. I like it because it's about just thinking objectively and not feeling pressured to conform to another viewpoint. So I guess the bottom line is my interest in political, contributing political activism to this organization. I was interested in doing it, but I think it turns out that it's just not gonna work out. And that's too bad. I mean, I had the feeling by today, really by last night, that it probably wasn't. But I was hopeful that it was just gonna be a little bit more intellectual. And I'm actually very disappointed. And I think it's interesting because the comment, one of the comments that I got was that the bill in the New Jersey legislature to, you know, ban plastic bags, I was told, you know, that there's a standstill on that. And I just think if you really want to move things forward, well, let's have organizations moving things forward where those organizations are very healthy intellectually and in other ways. So I guess I'll cut it off for now, but I just wanted to share that with you. I'll probably, I'll probably talk more about it tomorrow as I process it and think about things. But yeah, I just want to share that with you. Thoughts, et cetera, please share them. I, peace, peace out, yo, peace out, y'all. Keep it real, as I like to say. I'll chat with you later. Bye.